Perioperative Mortality, Wikipedia Article Audio Perioperative mortality has been defined as any death, regardless of cause, occurring within 30 days after surgery in or out of the hospital. An important consideration in the decision to perform any surgical procedure is to weigh the benefits against the risks. Anesthesiologists and surgeons employ various methods in assessing whether a patient is in optimal condition from a medical standpoint prior to undertaking surgery, and various statistical tools are available. ASA score is the most well known of these. Intraoperative causes Immediate complications during the surgical procedure, e.g. bleeding or perforation of organs may have lethal sequelae. Local infection of the operative field is prevented by using sterile technique, and prophylactic antibiotics are often given in abdominal surgery or patients known to have a heart defect or mechanical heart valves that are at risk of developing endocarditis. Complications following surgery Methods to decrease surgical site infections in spine surgery include skin preparation, use of surgical drains, prophylactic antibiotics, and vancomycin. Preventative antibiotics may also be effective. Infection whether any specific dressing has an effect on the risk of surgical site infection of a wound that has been sutured closed is unclear. Blood clots Examples are deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, the risk of which can be mitigated by certain interventions, such as the administration of anticoagulants, antiplatelet drugs, compression stockings, and cyclical pneumatic calf compression in high-risk patients. Lungs Many factors can influence the risk of postoperative pulmonary complications. Of all patient-related risk factors, good evidence supports patients with advanced age, ASA class 2 or greater, functional dependence, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and congestive heart failure, as those with increased risk for PPC. Of operative risk factors, surgical site is the most important predictor of risk for PPCs. The value of preoperative testing, such as spirometry, to estimate pulmonary risk is of controversial value and is debated in medical literature. Among laboratory tests, a serum albumin level less than 35 G/L is the most powerful predictor and predicts PPC risk to a similar degree as the most important patient-related risk factors. Neurologic Respiratory therapy has a place in preventing pneumonia related to atelectasis which occurs especially in patients recovering from thoracic and abdominal surgery. Strokes occur at a higher rate during the postoperative period. Livers and kidneys. Postoperative fever. Epidemiology. In people with cirrhosis, the perioperative mortality is predicted by the child Pew score. Postoperative fevers are a common complication after surgery and can be a hallmark of a serious underlying sepsis such as pneumonia, urinary tract infection, deep vein thrombosis, wound infection, etc. However, in the early post-operative period a low-level fever may also result from anesthetic-related atelectasis, which will usually resolve normally. Most perioperative mortality is attributable to complications from the operation or pre-existing medical conditions. In high-resource health care systems, statistics are often kept by mandatory reporting of perioperative mortality. These may then be used in league tables that compare the quality of hospitals. Critics of this system point out that perioperative mortality may not reflect poor performance but could be caused by other factors, e.g. a high proportion of acute-slash-unplanned surgery 
or other patient-related factors. Most hospitals have regular meetings to discuss surgical complications and perioperative mortality. Specific cases may be investigated more closely if a preventable cause has been identified. Globally, there are few studies comparing perioperative mortality across different health systems. One major prospective study of 10,745 adult patients undergoing emergency abdominal surgery from 357 centers in 58 high, middle, and low-income countries found that mortality is three times higher in low compared with high HDI countries even when adjusted for prognostic factors. In this study the overall global mortality rate was 1-6% at 24 hours, increasing to 5-4% by 30 days. Of the 578 patients who died, 404 did so between 24H and 30 days following surgery. Patient safety factors were suggested to play an important role with use of the WHO surgical safety checklist associated with reduced mortality at 30 days. Taking a similar approach, a unique global study of 1,409 children undergoing emergency abdominal surgery from 253 centers in 43 countries showed that adjusted mortality in children following surgery may be as high as seven times greater in low HDI and middle HDI countries compared with high HDI countries, translating to 40 excess deaths per 1,000 procedures performed in these settings. Internationally, the most common operations performed were appendectomy, small bowel resection, pyloromyotomy, and correction of intussusception. After adjustment for patient and hospital risk factors, child mortality at 30 days was significantly higher in low HDI, P0.001 and middle HDI. P equals 0.009 countries compared with high HDI countries. Mortality directly related to anesthetic management is less common, and may include such causes as pulmonary aspiration of gastric contents, asphyxiation, and anaphylaxis. These in turn may result from malfunction of anesthesia-related equipment or more commonly, human error. A 1978 study found that 82% of preventable anesthesia mishaps were the result of human error. In a 1954 review of 599,548 surgical procedures at 10 hospitals in the United States between 1948-1952, 384 deaths were attributed to anesthesia for an overall mortality rate of 0.064%. In 1984, after a television program highlighting anesthesia mishaps aired in the United States, American anesthesiologist Ellison C. Pierce appointed a committee called the Anesthesia Patient Safety and Risk Management Committee of the American Society of Anesthesiologists. This committee was tasked with determining and reducing the causes of perianesthetic morbidity and mortality. An outgrowth of this committee, the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation was created in 1985 as an independent, non-profit corporation with the vision that no patient shall be harmed by anesthesia. The current mortality attributable to the management of general anesthesia is controversial. Most current estimates of perioperative mortality range from one death in 53 anesthetics to one in 5,417 anesthetics. The incidence of perioperative mortality that is directly attributable to anesthesia ranges from one in 6,795 to one in 200,200 anesthetics. There are some studies however that report a much lower mortality rate. For example, 
a 1997 Canadian retrospective review of 2,830,000 oral surgical procedures in Ontario between 1973-1995 reported only four deaths in cases in which either an oral and maxillofacial surgeon or a dentist with specialized training in anesthesia administered the general anesthetic or deep sedation. The authors calculated an overall mortality rate of 1.4 per 1 million. It is suggested that these wide ranges may be caused by differences in operational definitions and reporting sources. The largest study of postoperative mortality was published in 2010. In this review of 3.7 million surgical procedures at 102 hospitals in the Netherlands during 1991-2005, postoperative mortality from all causes was observed in 67,879 patients, for an overall rate of 1.85%. Anesthesiologists are committed to continuously reducing perioperative mortality and morbidity. In 2010, the principal European anesthesiology organizations launched the Helsinki Declaration for Patient Safety in Anesthesiology, a practically based manifesto for improving anesthesia care in Europe.